All right, guys, we're going to talk about plants today real quick. Um, <clears throat> look at the progression of plants, um, some of the details, what it takes to be a plant, what makes them separate from uh, fungus and whatnot. So here we go. All right, so to be a plant, you have to be a eukaryote, you have to be multicellular, you have to be an autotroph, and you have to have a cell wall made of cellulose. If you have all of those things, then you are, have met the requirements to be in the plant kingdom. Um, <clears throat> we have very distinct uh, different types of tissues within plants, depending on how uh, advanced they are, and we'll get to those a little bit later. Uh, but you basically break the plant into three different parts. Uh, you have roots, stems, and leaves. Um, and they have some transport tissue, vascular tissue. Um, some of them do. Most of them do. Um, and <clears throat> we'll get into uh, that kind of progression of simple to complex. All right. So here we see the kind of algae protist ancestors uh, that have a lot of similar characteristics to modern day plants. They just don't, don't meet all the requirements. And then the very first group that meets all the requirements to be considered a plant are mosses. They're extremely small. They have no vascular tissue, meaning they have no xylem or phloem. Um, so they're very small. Uh, they have to grow right near water since they have a way to transport water throughout the plant. They only rely on uh, osmosis to be able to move water. Um, so it kind of limits their ability. They need to be uh, near water um, to have the ability to do life functions. And then we pick up the first advancements of vascular tissue and then we have our uh, ferns and relatives to ferns, meaning that they do have xylem and phloem. Uh, they have the ability to live a little bit further away from water uh, and be able to transport water from their roots up to the rest of the plant using the vascular tissue. Uh, they still kind of get tied closer to water because of their reproductive uh, strategy. Uh, they have fronds, which is the kind of like their version of their leaves. And on the underside of there, um, they're still releasing uh, kind of pollen type structure uh, or spore type structure. <clears throat> then we pick up the advancements of seeds uh, for reproduction. So again, getting a little bit further away from water, um, more independent of being able to get onto the land. Uh, the first group are the gymnosperms. Uh, the main group of gymnosperms are conifers, or the cone-bearing plants. These are going to be your, uh, I think, like pine trees or Christmas tree type shape, uh, needle-like leaves, uh, for the most part, evergreen. Uh, they rely on uh, wind. They have male and female cones. We just went through this during this quarantine. Uh, where we had the pollen from all of the uh, pine trees, all that yellow pollen uh, that's produced from the male cones. The wind blows it around and it hopefully hits the female pine cone, which is what you think of when you think of a pine cone. And in there they have the seeds. Uh, and then a lot of those seeds are uh, wind dispersed. They have the little wing on them as they fall to the ground. They have that little helicopter spin. Um, and then when we get to the most advanced plants, those are the flowering plants or the angiosperms. Uh, they produce flowers. They have male and female parts of the flower, and then they will have seeds inside of the uh, female part of the flower. And then when those seeds become fertilized, they uh, will produce some type of fruit. So the gymnosperm is a uh, stands for naked seed, uh, where the angiosperm is going to be, um, their, their seeds are going to be encompassed in a, a fruit. So how did we get onto land? Well, the big thing is uh, water. Got to be able to retain the moisture you have. Um, so that's that top waxy covering of the leaf, uh, the cuticle, and then stomata on the bottom of the leaf will open and close for gas exchange. 
uh, transporting resources, so the vascular tissue, being able to use the xylem to transport water and phloem to transport food and nutrients back down the plant, uh, growing upright uh, as the competition for light, um, the compound, the protein lignin, uh, will help support uh, the, the cells of the plant, and then reproduction without water, uh, getting away from like mosses and ferns relying on water for the gametes to find each other to where pollen is going to be able to uh, find the female part of the plant uh, independent of water. All right, vascular tissue, like I said, we got xylem and phloem. Xylem will carry water from the roots up to the top of the plant because it makes sense where do the plants get their water from they absorb it in the roots so it makes sense that's on the bottom they got to go up phloem carries the food where does the plant make the food where does it do photosynthesis it does it typically in the leaves the leaves are at the top of the plant that's where the food's made and so then it makes sense that it has to then transport that back down it's kind of their version of uh arteries and veins Arteries carry blood away from the heart. Veins carry blood back to the heart. They're directional, kind of the same type of concept here. All right, uh, plant life cycle uh, reproduction is uh, what is called alternation of generations. There means that they're going to alternate back and forth between a haploid stage of their life and a diploid stage of their life. Uh, the diploid phase begins with the fertilized egg, a zygote, just like uh, humans. The zygote divides by mitosis uh, and then becomes a sporophyte, uh, something that produces spores. A gametophyte is going to produce gametes. Um, the spore will germinate into the haploid uh, gametophyte, which means that uh, they're going to produce gametes. Uh, the gametes are made by, uh, by meiosis. And then when those sperm and egg meet, it forms back the, z the zygote and the whole cycle starts back over again. Uh, pretty self-explanatory, but we have uh, roots, stems, and leaves. Uh, roots can be fibrous or a taproot. Uh, fibrous roots are the ones that spread out uh, really far and wide. Um, a taproot's more of a single root that's going to anchor the plant down. Um, the big thing for the roots, what do they do? They absorb water and nutrients from the soil and they anchor the plant to the ground. Stems, what are stems for? Uh, that's kind of the connection between the roots and the photosynthetic uh, leaves at the top. Um, so this is gonna be used for supporting the top of the plant and used for transporting materials uh, with the vascular tissue. Uh, as far as leaves go, we've already dived into the structure of a leaf with the cuticle, epidermis, palisade mesophyll, spongy mesophyll. This is where uh, photosynthesis is going down. Uh, again, we covered photosynthesis uh, in pretty good detail in first semester. All right, different cell types, uh, colenchyma, parenchyma, uh, sclerenchyma, um, they each will do certain jobs for the plants. Um, and it's pretty kind of self-explanatory. The colenchyma are going to be um, extremely flexible cells, do not contain lignin. Uh, these are um, the young shoots and leaves of the plant, uh, very flexible material. The parenchyma are ones that are going to be um, Storage, uh, they can divide the entire life of the plant. Uh, they help heal plants. Uh, these are the ones that are gonna produce the photosynthetic cells where uh, the last type, the sclerenchyma, are the ones that are gonna produce thick, rigid cell walls. Uh, they provide the structure for the plant. Uh, they do not continue to grow the entire life of the plant once they die. Um, they leave their rigid cell wall very rich in lignin um, as just support for the rest of the plant to hold it up. 
All right, three different types of tissues. Um, dermal tissue, just like your dermis, it's the outside covering. Uh, that would be our skin. Um, then we have ground tissue, uh, which is the inside tissue of the plant. That's uh, storage material. Um, and then vascular tissue, that's our xylem and phloem. As we already mentioned, uh, xylem carries water up, phloem carries food down. All right, different types of plants uh, real quick. Like we said, the seedless non-vascular plant. These are mosses. Notice they are very, very tiny. They do not um, have any vascular tissue. They, they need to live very close to water. They still rely water for reproduction for the sperm to swim to the eggs. Uh, getting a little bit taller now, as you notice the, the height of the plant. Uh, these are the seedless vascular plants. These are ferns and their relatives. Um, they, they start to have vascular tissue so that we can transport materials up. So that explains why they can grow a little bit taller, uh, but they still rely on water for reproduction. Gymnosperms, um, as we mentioned, uh, we have the, uh, the, a lot of them use cones, not all of them, uh, but the majority of this group are uh, conifers. They're typically evergreen, and they are going to rely, um, now they have seeds. They don't need water for their reproduction, so they are moving further onto land, more independent of land, or uh, independent of water, I should say. And then angiosperms are our flowering plants. Uh, we'll break down the parts of a flower here in just a second. And the seeds on the inside will then turn into a fruit. These are the most successful plants, abundant plants uh, on the earth. All right, we break down a plant. Uh, we have the male part, which is the stamen. Kind of easy to remember because it has the word men in it. That's the male part made of the anther and filament. The filament holds up the anther. The anther creates the pollen grains, uh, which is the male gamete. The carpal um, is made of, that's the female part, made of the stigmas, the style, and the ovary. The stigma is a little sticky part on the top of the style. That's the part that's going to accept the pollen grains, the pollen will then work its way down the style, which is just a connective tube that connects the stigma to the ovary. The ovary, just like a female ovary, contains uh, eggs on the inside, and those eggs, when they are fertilized by pollen, will then turn into a fruit. Uh, then on the outside, you have your attractive petals of the leaves to attract pollinators to them, and then the sepal is just the protective covering around the outside of the leaf uh, or outside of the flower while it's developing into its final structure. Okay, uh, hopefully this uh, helps you guys out. Um, I hope everybody's staying safe uh, during this time and um, let me know if you guys have any questions.